even on sort of a code level, it shouldn't include this parameter hidden. And we get around that problem. So it also allows, makes it easier for us to include information from other sources, say if we connect this to OpenStreetMap and they add coordinates, then it's easier for us to get that into database efficient identity lists and then force them to go into Wikipedia. And so the target audience for this is primarily was primarily Wikipedians, just what we are. But also researchers who want to get this sort of overview of all of the public art that there is in Sweden. Uh, schools who might want to write, write about local artworks or local artists and their artworks spread out throughout the whole country. Journalists who want to figure out what the hell these companies are spending all this money on. And tourism boards that simply want to either highlight things in the city or allow the creation of cool apps for walk around our city and see all the fancy extra stuff that we have at neighboring city might also have, but it was online first. So, as you might imagine, every single step in this process, there are some complications or difficulties that we need to overcome. So I figured that the best way for me to explain this and to show this to you is probably to so guide you through different steps and explain what we've done, uh, any problems that we've encountered, or the lessons that we've learned from that. Um, and hopefully thereby make it easier for this to be used otherwise as well. A uh, small caveat is that not all of the steps here are in place yet. So it's still a work in progress. So I'll start with the data providers. So in Sweden we're quite lucky because we have something here called the Public Sector Information Directive, which essentially works like freedom of information requests. So if we ask the municipalities for their data and they have it, then they're legally required to give it to us. Wait, some small minor issues that they can throw up. Um, so what we did was we focused on the larger cities and those municipalities we knew had some sort of contact with open data or similar projects before, figuring that these are people who are also able to give us the best feedback so that we can improve the process when we can to municipalities that have never encountered this at all before and are simply, quite frankly, clueless. Uh, so, even though we have this public sector in this uh, directive uh, that we could use, we still word our letters to them as sort of friendly requests, but we sprinkle just enough of these keywords in there so that it's not just sort of thrown, thrown out straight away. Because we learned that that gives us a better dialogue with them. It enables us to, if they have questions, they will actually ask them, rather than just saying no. So, uh, we specifically asked them for the data that's on this slide, but we also made it very clear to them if you have other information that they haven't thought of, or if you don't have some of this information, then please still send it to us. The only thing we don't want are your images. And this is for copyright issues and freedom of panorama related issues that, if you really want to know, we can take them afterwards. So we instantly encountered quite a lot of problems. The biggest one being the quality of the data. So a lot of these municipalities they have no unique identifiers, they have either unstructured data or incoherently structured data, which is even worse. Um, sometimes the data is digitized, sometimes it's uh, in terms of advertisement for sure, so tourism for sure, so here's a good example of tourism for sure, so it's a PDF. What you don't realize is that the next page, they put the lines in different orders. Scan files, scan PDFs. 
or my favorite, after months of trying to convince them to release their data, you get the full list of all of the artworks in their city, which is something like eight, ten. And that's just a handwritten list by the person because they didn't actually have any real record of them. Uh, and we also had one municipality that came back to us say we have no information at all about any of this in our city. Sorry. Uh, those problems are still quite visible. I mean, if you've got crap data, you can see that it's crap data. There's a more hidden problem, which is selection definition. Some of these municipalities will send us a selection based on the preferences of the person who we contacted. He thinks that these are the ones that are important in our city, and he'll tell us that these are all that there are in our city. Sometimes it will be all of the indoor artwork, or all of the outdoor artwork, but not both, and won't necessarily appear which. Uh, sometimes you will get only the artwork that means how the owns. Sometimes you'll get ones that they own that they take care of, which might be more, or simply just anything that they can think of in that geographical region. And you try to follow up and get sort of what did you mean when you said, when we asked for public art, what did you actually send us? But there isn't a clear legal definition for this. So you get lots of seemingly similar descriptions that might not be the same. Uh, there's also big unawareness when you contact these municipalities about what open data is and why anyone wants their data. For a lot of these, the first uh, reaction is suspicion. Uh, there's a problem with their internal structure in that often the person you contact is not the person responsible for the underlying database. So you're contacting a curator normally, but the database is maintained by the traffic department because they have the big servers. And very frequently a subcontractor will have set up this database and all that the curator ever does is manually open this program, enter stuff, and then they press the print PDF button that's the only output format that they know of. Um, and following on to this is done for your built program uh, uh, problem that for them the PDF is good enough because that's all that they care about. Getting any type of structured data out is really hard and quite frequently you get the answer, well we have some information on we have all of the things on our homepage. Why don't you just like click through these two hundred things or enter the search search terms 200 times so you can get information, which isn't really what we're asking for. Um, slightly surprising to me, at least when I started, was that there's also nervousness about what will happen once this data is publicly accessible. So one municipality contacted us about their worries that if we give you the list of all of our artwork and know where they are and then you add coordinates that, that someone can simply plot out all of the bronze statues in our city and go there, like cut off the heads and then you sell them to a metal body, which is, might sound like a silly worry, but it does happen. Uh, and obviously we don't, that's not something we actively want to help. Uh, there's privacy issues, so can we really tell you guys about who's the author of this artwork? And if we're allowed to tell you who the author is, can we tell you when he lived, when he died? Which is stuff that we need to know for copyright reasons. But they, been trained to treat as confidential data or potentially problematic data. And then the last one, which is, I guess, quite natural, is this is, has primarily been treated as internal data until now. So there will be mistakes, and you, you might not use the same structure over the years, but everybody knows what everything means. Once you're putting it out there, then you risk criticism. So one of the most common replies was, oh, we'll be happy to give you this data if we can just polish it first. And we're gonna do this very soon, in a month, two months, six months, when we get funding for it. Um, so that was something I I wasn't really expecting. We did get some results though. So in our first phase, our goal was only 25 minutes found least mainly to show that this could work and then set up sort of the database structure and all of that. So we're doing quite well on that goal, but as you can see on the map, that's just a small part of the whole of Sweden. Um, and the main sort of thing to take away from this was actually that it takes this 
part here takes up a lot more time than you think. This is pro this is a single, the individually biggest tank thief in the whole the whole project. Uh, and the data that you get out of this in the end is also way worse than you might have thought, especially if you're used to dealing with because monuments data, which is highly stored, but often this comes from some sort of legal protection, so they're all semi well documented, structured from one source. Uh, but there were also some very positive side effects. So, due to these contacts with people in the municipalities, you start discussions there about open data within, like internal discussions there, and at the end of this project, every municipality that we contacted will have to deal with at least one. Request for open uh, for, for data. We've had at least one policy decision within a municipality in support. And for this reason, we're also cooperating with two partners. So one is an umbrella organisation for municipalities. They've helped us a lot with finding the right person to contact, so that you skip the first month of them just sending you from one person to another until someone owns the issue. The second organisation is and the second is a company that's specifically hired to help municipalities become better at dealing with open data requests just by teaching them what we so what we've encountered and by having them teach us what they're hearing from the municipalities. We're hopefully making this for everyone later on to uh, transfer open data. Not only okay. so shifting to how the status translated into or into a database, the SAT shows uh, that it's through a lot of massaging of the data, making it fit some sort of structured form, interpreting what they've meant with certain parameters, etc. Ideally, we'd like some sort of direct API access to their database so that we get all of their updates automatically. That just doesn't happen. In reality, every single data set requires a different massage technique, different scripts to filter it, and will require, at this point at least, contact him again to get updates to data. We're hoping that they'll see the benefit of what we're doing and therefore get more structured systems or possibly reuse what we've used. Like, once we've digitized their data, they're very, very happy to have it. But whether that will happen or not, still, still have to see. So, I said before that we want to fill this role as an aggregator as well. So that means that we need them to figure out how to treat the official data differently from the later editions. And also, if we want to return this data to the municipalities, so that's the backward area in the previous slide, um, then we need to figure out some way of um, marking which are the changes to their data. So not not the overall changes to the whole object, but specific changes to the date compared to the date that they originally got. Which moves on to the actual database. So like any project, it's given a name that makes some sense. It's instantly turned into an abbreviation that makes no sense for anyone who doesn't work with it. Uh, in this case it's a doc, which stands for open doc was authentically const which unsurprisingly is Swedish for Open Database Public Art. Since we didn't start off thinking of the global perspective, it doesn't make it clear that it's for Sweden. But that's the way it is. Um, I'll return to how this could be expanded to other countries as well. If I don't, then remind me. So, back to this issue of being both an aggregator and a provider of fixed style data, the way we dealt with that was by keeping an audit version of all of the original data uh, as soon as it gets changed. And you also keep track, you also use a flag to determine if a change has happened to this post. So that means if, say, an update comes in from Wikipedia and it's instantly reverted because it's boundless, then at that point you can still compare the two entries, you can say, okay, this is still the same as the audit version, so there is no real change, and you can then reset timestamps or whatever you want to do. Um, what we then do is that we allow anyone querying the database to look at it through one of three different views. So we've got strict view, where all you see is the original data as provided by 
uh, the data provider errors and everything. There's an in-between mode, which is which I call the task mode, which gives you the original data plus any non-conflicting data. So if you send an entry which has the name of the artwork and the artist, but it doesn't have any coordinates, and then the Wikipedia comes and the coordinates, then you can still get those as well. Whereas if the Wikipedia corrects the title, then you wouldn't get that corrected title. You still get the official misspelled title. That's what you want. And then there's the normal view, which gives you sort of the topmost layer and exactly what you did, what you see on Wikipedia or other sources. Uh, and then, in addition to the parameters that we get, we have some Wikipedia specific parameters, so sample image, comments category, Wikipedia article about that specific artwork, Wikipedia article about the artist or artists, um, a unique ID if there isn't one already, so we can talk about it on Wikipedia and link it to images and comments, etc. Same as ID, which essentially allows, since some of these, since some of these data products exist at different levels, they'll include the same artwork in more than one database. So this is a way for us to say that they're talking about the same thing, but still keep a persistent um, identifier, unique identifier, so that you don't get these dead broken links just because we figured out that actually you're talking about the same thing as he's talking about. Try also to keep a record of the copyright status in order, well, both for internal reasons, but also in order to prevent people from uploading images if they are, in fact, say, inside the national public domain. Uh, and there are several artists, essentially, so that you can do queries on artists as well as on artworks, which you don't really need to be close on to be here. So on the media side, it's just as for the four big close monuments, family space lists, this encourages, encourages free images to be uploaded. Conflict resolution is dealt with in the same way it's dealt with in all articles. Most of these entries can be moved to big data once the phase three is set up. Uh, and what we can do in addition to addition these, we can also then create these lists based on artists and not only by geography, which is Thing, and which is also that we currently already have this for Wikipedia. The way that these things are put to Wikipedia is also very similar to how it works in Big Love's Monuments. So you don't have running in the background. Any update that you have on Wikipedia gets pushed into the database, the other way around. The difference here is that the database can also push updates to the lists. So if the beginning of the spell gives you new data that's been pushed in. And you can also use database to create new lists, which can work. And the last step, which is downstream users. So as before, we have an open API. This allows flexibility to downstream. You can query to many of these three views and filter by various parameters. You can also get your data in several different formats. Once again, as similar to Big Monuments. It also has to, uh, an option for essentially the data providers to figure out what are the changes to my data. Is this something I want? So that they can use that to determine which one update it. And we also try and keep track of if it's explicitly asked us to send us updates on this. Um, intending to build in support for querying based on artists so you can get this of all, art, all the artwork that this artist has been, inspired, uh, been involved in, or artists, other artists that have collaborated with this artist and their artworks, etc. And there might possibly be support for writing to the database from certain trusted applications, etc. So, final slide. Uh, this is our showcase proof concept, and it's essentially data taken for the depth of Stockholm city that has geo coordinates that have been derived from the media lists and this is linked up to um, different data that we have so 
you get a link to the artist, you get structured description of where in the city it is. If there's an article, it will go and get the ingression from that article, display it there, and also to put in a link to the to the actual rest of the article. And get an image from the That is it, I think. Yeah. 